images, but in reality, it's absolutely heartbreaking. But uh, my uh, no SIM phone normally is on three months. The TV is turned to some other channel. I have to go and uh, I turn it off or change it back to three months. The TV, I'll come back. Uh, don't worry about me. That was just three months. The television suddenly changed to another channel somewhere. I turn it off already. I put it outside. Uh, I have a table outside. I can't cook in the tent, of course. I cook outside, <laughs> in the open. Yeah, a little bit of cooking. But I'm planning, maybe it's too much trouble, so I just won't cook anymore. Just eat whatever, you know? Bread and raw vegetables, raw the no pain. Fruit should be okay also. I do whatever I can in my situation, everywhere I go. You can't just always have everything. But don't worry about me. I live, okay? I live. Millions of people would be grateful to have what I have. So I am deeply grateful to God, to heavens, all the angels, all the protectors for sustaining me thus far, protecting me and keeping me safe. Please, if you believe, thank them also for our lives and for me as well. And you know, by the way, if you live in the wilderness, it's very easy to make your own furniture. If you have some metal wire or string, you can bind those dry wood sticks together and make a table in no time. It's very enjoyable to have such a table. If you have to go and live alone, it's very inconvenient in many ways. You just bring a big Swiss knife and a small row of metal wire. And you can bring some fallen wood or something next to your tent or nearby. You can sit on it like a chair. And you can be comfortable, inventive. Don't have to always live in a real house or have furniture and all that. And nowadays it's easy to buy something such as a warming pack, yes. Or if you have some small hot water bottle, you can use a wood to cook uh, hot water and fill water in the bottle and keep yourself warm at night. In case you have to be in the forest or something, hey, don't worry, okay? Yes. You can order something to a nearby address, close to where you live. And you go there, wait for the deliverance to come collect it and bring it back to where you live. And if you live simply, even with just like brown rice sesame or rice and some uh, lentils, then you can cook with wood. Dry wood is plentiful in any forest. Dry grass also. But make sure you dig a hole in the ground so that the flames or the coal does not spread all over around you. Make sure the place where you cook has a clearance. There are no nearby trees or leaves or stuff like that. And uh, if you want to dig a hole, you can use a sharp piece of stone or wood, a piece of wood that has some sharp ends or something that's broken from the tree. But with some big sticks, you dig a shallow hole, about 20 or 30 centimeters at the deepest, and both sides are slanting upward. So when you put wood inside the worm, it's uh, very easy, and uh, nothing will fly out of that to endanger the forest. But that has to be clear, the bigger the better. Five meter radius, clear, okay? And you bring a lighter, yes, of course. If you dig a hole in the soil, you know, the way I told you, a V-shape, the two ends are up and the deep end is uh, in the ground. Then you can put a little light pot on it. You can cook water. Yeah, and anything you want to cook, one or two very light pots. Those are in the spot shop they sell for picnics, camping. Yeah, make your life simple. Then 
you can survive. Hmm? Uh, but uh, it's good that you live in a safe place, you know, in a house and somewhere near the city, easier for you. So you don't have to walk far to drag your foot back home because in the world it's, it's difficult to get a taxi, you know. You don't have an address, so you have a nearest possible address, maybe even a gas station or something, and you order your food to there, or you, you buy food there, or ask them to help you to buy simple food that you need, and then you bring it, you walk home. You walk to where you camp, where your tent is. It's also convenient. Walking is also good for you anyway, yeah? And if you walk, you can go in the shop like that, you can wear your mask, and people don't really recognize you. Just live according to the situation, and you will survive. Do not expect the same thing everywhere you go. A new house and new village is also different from your old house and your old city or old village. Not to talk about in the wilderness, it's of course different. So you have to use your IQ. Hmm? All those simple things to sustain your life are just so that you can have more time to contemplate, to remember God, so that you can go into a higher level of spiritual attainment in this lifetime and the next. The more simple your life is, the better for you. And sometimes even the farther away from normal human activities, the better for your spiritual elevation, improvement. But you must have the real method. You can't just sit there or breathe in, breathe out. What if you sleep, you don't remember breathing? So that means at that time you're not meditating, yeah? So just choose a real good effective mantra that you believe in from Buddhism or from saints' names in yours or other religions or a mantra that you know works. That's the purpose of life. It's not to hoard a lot of possessions or a big house or big car and all that stuff because you will leave them all behind. When your breath leaves you, everything leaves you. So practicing with a breathing method is not always a secure method. Find another one, like the Kuan Yin method, reciting Buddha's name or a mantra. But better you find a living saint, living good monks, good priests, because they already succeeded in their practice and they have plenty of energy to spare for you. Just like a person who has a lot of food in his house, he can share with you. It's like that. You have to find a truly good practicing monks and priests or practitioners of a good religion. A good traditional one is safer when you don't know a living master. Then recite a mantra of Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Christianity, or the names of saints and Buddhas. Trust that. Pick one. If you don't have any master or monks to rely on, then pick one for yourself. Sincerely ask God to bless that mantra for you. Bless the name of the saints for you. Bless the name of that Buddha for you. And continue to recite that all the time, anytime, until even when you sleep, you do it subconsciously. In the Kuan Yin method, sometimes we wake up and then we realize that we are in the middle of reciting the five holy names. And in the middle of just waking up from Samadhi because the inner heavenly light is still flashing around you and then disappears when you truly are out of samadhi, out of that meditation samadhi, and back into real physical life. Sometimes not. Sometimes it lingers a long, long time. Sometimes all day, all night, you see in the heavenly light. But it depends on your concentration, okay? Now, if everything is too difficult for you, just recite the names of the Buddhas. Or trust in Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Yes. And trust the names of the saints in your religion. Be vegan and keep peace. When you begin, to, you turn now and recite the holy names of the saints, of the Buddhas, and all the mantras from the Buddhas, then please be vegan, please. Because if you are vegan, then you are more connected with life, not with death, not with killing. Killing karma is very, very heavy. And even if you recite sincerely, but you don't have enough time to build up this uh, uh, holy and uplifting energy, then it's very difficult to use meager energy to reach a high land, you know, higher realm of the Buddhas and saints. 
first you have to be vegan for yourself, not just because of compassion for the suffering of the animal people, but for yourself, so that you don't connect with this heavy, dragging, burdensome karma of killing, which will drown you, degrade you, and drag you down to a lower existence or hell. I hope it's logical enough for you. Because if you just cut some leaves from plants or trees to eat, then the leaves will grow again. They have seeds, you know, and can grow again. Very simple, just put it on the ground and the vegetable will grow. See, it's life. It's a symbol of life. You put a seed and it grows. Even if you cut some of the branches of the vegetable, you can use that branch to grow. Most of them are like that. So it's life. It's not killing, not death. 